Thanks for joining us on this Monday night with Kelly Swoop. I'm Jamie Costello. Video captured by Baltimore City Police cameras now at the center of a lawsuit. It was filed today against the city officer. Attorneys for the Baltimore man say he was viciously attacked and sucker punched by a cop for no reason. ABC 2 News' Catherine Hawley is here now with the very latest. Catherine. Well, the incident happened back in June, and it was all caught on camera. Attorneys representing Colin Truss say the 32-year-old didn't commit any crime, but a six-year veteran of the force harassed, followed, assaulted, and then arrested the Baltimore man. Charges, his lawyers say, were all dropped once the state's attorney saw the video. It was vicious, malicious, and unnecessary. That's what attorneys representing 32-year-old Colin Truss say about this video of a Baltimore City police officer punching him in the head and face over and over again. Make no mistake, this is not a fight. A fight implies that somebody has a chance to defend themselves. This was a beating. Tony Garcia and Ivan Bates filed a multi-million dollar lawsuit today in circuit court for what they're calling a brutal attack by Officer Vincent Kosum. According to the incident report, back on June 15th, Kosum encountered Truss drunk outside a liquor store at Greenmount and North Avenues. Two times, the officer says he asked Truss to leave, but he instead went inside the shop. A nearby police camera captured it all on tape. You can see in the video when Truss comes out, the two exchange words before a female friend leads Truss away. Three officers follow the pair across the street. He's walking around the bus shelter to try to go have a seat with his head down, his uh, bag in his hand. The other arm is being held by his female friend. For out of the blue, the officer hits him. Kosum claims he punched Truss out of fear for his safety and that he received a punch to the body, saying Truss pushed the female with open hands three times and he got into a fighting stance and clenched his fist. Statements Truss's lawyers say are lies. There's a man who's beaten by the police. He's in jail for two days. He's then charged with the crime that he did not commit. He says charges filed against Truss were quickly dropped once the video was released. But the attorneys are not satisfied with how this incident has been handled, calling it a cover-up. The state's attorney's office has this video. So why were no charges instituted against this officer? Why is there no investigation going on against and Baltimore police would not comment on camera today, but they do tell us an investigation is being done by internal affairs. Kosum is still on the job working with the Neighborhood Patrol Bureau. Catherine Hawley, ABC2 News. That is our big story tonight. City crime cameras captured that incident back in June. That officer has now been suspended with pay. And Police Commissioner Anthony Batts has admitted there are some major problems with the way the department handled the situation. 11 News reporter Kai Reed is live at police headquarters with what that witness had to say. Kai. Well, okay, uh, Stephanie Coleman says that she has a really hard time watching that video. She said that her first instinct was to get out of that situation as quickly as possible and to protect her friend. Stephanie Coleman is the woman in the video who looks like she's trying to defuse an out of control situation. It was real scary. I didn't know what to do. I just, I just was yelling, just screaming. Stephanie told us that she didn't want to show her face for this interview, but she explained that on June 15th, she and her friend Colin Truss were standing outside of a liquor store near Greenmount and North Avenues when Officer Vincent Kosum told a crowd of people to leave the area. She says they went in to get one more drink before closing time and came out to find Officer Kosum shouting accusations at Truss. He said, did you just assault her? Did you just put your hands on her? He said, I didn't assault her. I said, he didn't assault me. He said, he did just assault you. I said, no, he didn't. Kyla was like, why you um, treat me, you know, disrespect me like I'm a man, like you're a man. I'm human like you're human. And treat me how you want to be treated. I'm not no kid. I'm 32. Stephanie says that she and Trust turned and walked across the street toward the nearby bus stop, but Kosum followed them. Then we were surrounded by officers. Then he just came up out of nowhere and just hit him. That first hit actually knocked him out. Then he started hitting him, which is... We'll come back up. Police Commissioner Batts told reporters that although the department had the video since June, he didn't know about it until it was shown in the media on Monday. Tuesday, Officer Kosum was placed on paid administrative leave. Mayor Stephanie Rawlings-Blake says the video just further illustrates a comprehensive need for reform. Everything that you see, everything that I saw was a concern to me. It wasn't handled right at the incident, and it, and it certainly wasn't handled right afterwards. Should this be gone? Like, just not begging the police force, 
that's it for him because if he did it this time, how many more times he won't do it again? And now Colin Truss was initially arrested and charged after the incident, but prosecutors dropped those charges when they determined that Officer Kosum's story did not match what was seen on video. Now, Baltimore City Police also released the names of two other officers who were there at the time of the incident, Officers Dominic Gerber and Christopher Dunlap. They did not give an employment status for those officers. So reporting live at Baltimore City Police Headquarters, Kai Reed, WBAL, TV 11 News. Well, the Baltimore City Police officer caught on camera punching a man repeatedly has been suspended from the job. Tonight, the department's top brass speaking out as local leaders question why it took three months to pull him off the street. ABC2 News' Catherine Howley joins us now with more. Catherine? Both the Baltimore City Police Commissioner and the mayor say they didn't see the video of the violent attack until yesterday when Colin Truss's attorneys filed a multi-million dollar lawsuit against Officer Vincent Kosum. They say the brutal beating is disgusting. There's no sound, but the police surveillance video that captured the encounter appears to show Officer Vincent Kosum attack Colin Truss for no reason. It happened back in June at a bus stop at Greenmount and North Avenues. Kosum can be seen pummeling the 32-year-old on the head and face while another officer holds his arm. Nothing that I saw on that video is defensible, nor should it be defensible. And most importantly, it's unacceptable and will not be tolerated within this organization. The department's top brass says the cop operating the camera flagged the footage. Internal Affairs has known about the video for at least two months, and the state's attorney's office is investigating with the intent to go to the grand jury. Yet Kosum has been working the streets for the last three months. Why did the police wait from June until now before they suspended that officer? Why did the police that saw the video yesterday allow that officer to make arrest and work yesterday? What Bates is calling a cover-up, the department says was a breakdown of communication, explaining a middle manager failed to alert the proper people. This officer should have been uh, uh, removed from the field immediately. Uh, I should have been notified immediately, and uh, we will also address that. The department promises to investigate every officer involved, including those who witnessed it and did nothing, as Mayor Stephanie Rawlings-Blake is calling for swift action to make sure this doesn't happen again. I take police brutality very seriously, and it is a breakdown of public trust when that video is out there and the proper people haven't seen it. Officers involved in the incident have not been released. Both the mayor and police commissioner said today they are looking into outfitting city police officers with body cameras. Catherine Hawley, ABC2 News. Shock and outrage tonight from City Hall to police headquarters after an officer is caught on surveillance camera beating up a citizen. The controversial video now has the mayor and police commissioner calling for a new addition to police uniforms. And WJZ's Rochelle Ritchie joins us live to explain. Rochelle? Well, Denise, the police commissioner not holding back, calling the officer's uh, actions disgusting and unacceptable. And he says he wants body cameras on all of his cops to hold them and citizens accountable and keep everyone safe. This is the video that has Baltimore City's top cop outraged after one of his officers is caught punching a man with a closed fist almost 10 times. Nothing that I saw on that video is defensible, nor should it be defensible. It the commissioner fed up now wants body cameras on all of his officers. And it may be a good opportunity for us uh, to look further down the road as cost factors and our capabilities to bring body cameras online. The commissioner has the support of Mayor Stephanie uh, Rawlings Blake. Happen. We want to get provide the right training, but also provide the right tools for if it happens again. The June 15th beatdown caught on police surveillance video shows six-year veteran officer Vincent Kosum and Colin Truss in a verbal argument right before crossing the street where you see the officer walk around the bus shelter and deliver a knockout punch right in Kosum's face. Well, body cameras seem like a win-win for police officers and citizens. Some wonder if those cameras will be an invasion of privacy. Bob Cherry, president of the Baltimore City Fraternal Order of Police put cameras on cops, you know, what's next? Cameras on doctors, cameras on teachers. Terry says the body cameras are proving successful in decreasing complaints, but some departments are getting rid of them because of problems in court. The juries wanted to see nothing but the camera, and if it wasn't on camera, they didn't want, you know, any of the testimony from the offices or the detectives. But the commissioner is no stranger to their use. He used them as a chief in California and stands ready to do it again. This conduct 
It has no place in American policing. It has no place in the Baltimore Police Department. Now, Officer Kosum has been suspended. However, he is still being paid. The other officers in that video could also face disciplinary action. We're live tonight. I'm Rochelle Ritchie, WJZ Eyewitness News. All right, thank you, Rochelle. The Laurel Police Department is already using body cameras. They were purchased for $2,000 each. It's 11 o'clock. Thanks for watching us. I'm Jamie Costello along with Kelly Swoop and surveillance video that captured a Baltimore City Police officer punching a man repeatedly in the face has local leaders once again thinking about outfitting police with body cameras. Yeah, some departments in Maryland are already using the equipment, and soon you can see them on our own men and women in blue here. ABC2 News' Catherine Hawley explains tonight. Well, the small cameras can be worn on the chest or on the head like a headband or attached to glasses. Proponents argue the cameras will take the guesswork out of what really happens on police patrols, while others worry about privacy and consent. It's an issue Baltimore leaders say they're considering. Go ahead and turn the car off and hand him the keys. Hand him the keys. A suspected drunk driver flees from cops in Laurel. The entire encounter was captured on the officer's body camera. The suspect was caught, and it's hard to argue what the video shows. Northbound. That's something that we're certainly taking a look at. Mayor Stephanie Rawlings Blake says her office, along with the police department, are considering arming the force with body cams. I've had uh, sergeants within my organization uh, reviewing this uh, process and may, may be a good opportunity for us uh, to look further down the road as cost factors and our capabilities to bring body cameras online. David Family members of Tyrone West say he died last year during a traffic stop after being beaten by police. The officers were cleared of any wrongdoing, but it's a case where they say police cameras could have been helpful. Totally deaf. My brother would still be alive. Experts argue the equipment can provide valuable evidence in court and cut back on brutality complaints. Although questions remain about the use of cameras. President of the Baltimore City Police Union, Bob Cherry, says leaders should slow down and consider all the implications. Is a video always going to be a recording? Is it only going to be on some of the time? What's the storage for it? Who gets copies of it? Is it open to the public? Is it open to the media? Is it open to just the defense attorneys? Commissioner Batts says he was one of the first chiefs in the nation to equip officers with body cameras when he worked in California. This week, the White House weighed in on the issue, saying police cams could help bridge the deep mistrust between law enforcement and the public. Catherine Hawley, ABC2 News. For two years now, the police commissioner says he's worked to curb police brutality. Crime and Justice reporter Joy Lapola now explains accountability and true reform could be two completely different things. Everyone that played a role, whether they had actions that they took or whether they witnessed and didn't take any action, is a part of this investigation. This video of a Baltimore City police officer repeatedly punching a man has led to a $35 million civil lawsuit against the city. The lawsuit was filed almost three months to the day following the attack. During that time, Officer Vincent Cossum remained on the street. And more importantly, city officials say no internal investigation was initiated. Due to the law enforcement officer's Bill of Rights, the probe might not have happened at all. That's because an officer could avoid being investigated if a complaint isn't filed within 90 days, which is why even the mayor is saying reform of the law is needed. To change the, the, bill of, uh, the officer's Bill of Rights to make it easier for us to do those prosecutions and make it more effective for us to investigate and to prosecute, yes, I will. Reform former police officers say has to happen to prevent scenes like these from occurring again. Ten days is a long period of time. Things happen, minds are, are different. Steve Tabling testified in Annapolis last year in favor of reducing another key part of the law, a 10-day period after an incident when the officer does not have to talk to investigators. And I also think it gives the police commissioner a very difficult responsibility because he has to answer the public. And if he's not getting any answers, how, how can he give the public an answer? But state delegate Jill Carter, who introduced the bill, which never made it out of committee, says change won't be easy without real support from City Hall. If they'll move the lip service to the legislature, then we can, we can get something done because it's time. Support, which the mayor says she is considering, after another allegation of police brutality.
I think we definitely need to do it. I did speak with a representative from the police union this afternoon, and from their standpoint, the officer's Bill of Rights doesn't protect what they call, quote, dirty cops, but instead offers officers due process. Joy LaPola, Fox 45 News.